number of different stories I in the news uh, at the moment. Um, we, we talked yesterday about um, J.K. Rowling and the absurd thing where you know the Harry Potter stars who wanted anything to do with her, even over the 25th anniversary of the books that, and the films that made her, made them a star, made her her millions, um, wanting nothing to do with her. Um, and uh, Julie Bindle, um, you know, an activist on women's rights, uh, being you know, suing a local council for banning her from speaking at a library because of her supposedly transphobic views. Um, now we have an interesting case. A woman is suing a rape crisis charity after she attended a, a women's victim support group and a trans woman, i.e. a biological male, was allowed to attend that group as well, which was supposed to be a safe space for women who've been victims of male violence. And she's now suing them, saying she felt unable to speak at the support group. Um, do you support that move? You can't be kidding. <laughs> Again, what we see here is a... Uh, I hate to say it, is this is a group of women who I, I guess who feel that they are being well-meaning and instead of centering women who have been through the most appalling most traumatic experience they are of course centering the penis yeah, I mean, there, there is that. There's the thing. It seems to me, though, I mean, the, 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 a lot of these charities, they do, the, the, this charity in particular, the Survivors Network, uh, they're going to defend this claim. They do actually, you know, offer, you know, help for male victims of sexual violence as well as female victims of sexual violence. But we know, you know, the 99.9% I mean, .9 of women who are victims of sexual violence will be at the hands of a man. And, and many women have been victims of, of a numerous male violence. It may be the, a father or another family figure. And then later on, boyfriends, uh, husbands and others um, and, and they'll be wanting a safe space where they feel they can be they can able to talk freely and they're not going to want to talk freely when there is a biological male sitting in the room and if you were that trans woman surely you would recognize that and if you were a victim yourself you would want to make sure that those women felt safe yeah I agree completely I mean this is somebody who is probably putting out that he identifies as a woman, but clearly he doesn't identify with women. The, the lack of empathy that, that is there, that somebody would, uh, would, would take on women's services rather than services that were, 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 were man-inclusive uh, as, as an appeal to his own vanity is quite astonishing. I think that there is something as well that we have to recognise in that the women that are running these organizations are pretty much over a barrel and they are put in the position that if they don't provide these services and make them trans inclusive which basically means everything inclusive because yeah. you know uh, today's definition of trans is pretty much any useful idiot um what, what happens if they don't include these people within their spaces is that they're subjected to a a, a barrage of abuse and violent threats and yeah. sexual threats and death threats. We've all seen it. We've all been there. It's not just online. This happens, you know, it horrible, ang real. angry mobs and the like. So they're, they're sort of, yeah, yeah. they're over a barrel themselves. But we also know they may be, you know, a completely genuine person who genuinely, born a biological male, born man, genuinely believes that they are female um, and, and, and wants to attend, has been a genuine victim of sexual violence and wants to attend this group. But again, should be able to understand Stand and empathise with the needs of, of other of other women there, um, but also we know there is a very big concern about sexual perverts, male predators in, who who are not trans but are using this self identification uh, uh, idea um, as a way of basically getting their rocks off, listening to women talking about their abuse, and we we need to accept that that is something that is happening. Um, yeah, I would say that that's. Um Although that is quite extreme, it's not completely implausible and that there would be an element of validation for that individual as being part of that group. Yeah. And I think that that in itself is inherently, <laughs> inherently invasive and destructive towards that female space. Yeah. And can I ask you just finally about the uh, school that uh, has decided that uh, they've got a, 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 a you know, but was it binary, non-binary school uniform so you can wear skirts or trousers, but it's been worn. Boys want to wear shorts. No, you can't wear shorts, but you can wear skirts. What do you make of that? It's the same nuts thing that we seem to get every single week, isn't it, really? It's, it's <laughs> what, what can we I'm, I mean, yeah, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm all in favour of um, all in favour of men wearing skirts if they want to. Just don't claim to be a woman. <laughs> yeah, as you say, as you say, you're, you're a trans woman yourself. Oh, wonderful voice of sanity. As always, always great to talk to you, Miranda Yardley.